Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your favorite quarterback hater, Robert Mathis, and you're listening to the For the Culture Podcast. This is the For the Culture Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Diamond, with my man, Jason Spears. 31-3, the Colts defeat the Houston Texans, and we did what we were supposed to do. When you see a bad team, when you see a 1-4 team come into your building, they're coming off a demoralizing loss against the Patriots. We were as well. We were coming off a demoralizing loss to the Ravens on Monday night, and we had a short week. But we came home and we did what we were supposed to do. We took care of business. We held a bad offense with a rookie quarterback to three points. We forced three turnovers offensively. We ran the ball extremely well in the second half. We threw the ball well in the first half. We had a good complete game. We put up 30 points for the first time this year. So it was the ultimate three-phase team win. The kicker that we signed this week on Wednesday came in for Blankenship, who's out with the hip, made all his kicks. So... After a terrible blown lead, blown 16-point lead in the fourth quarter on Monday night, doing everything wrong at the end of that game and having a three-phase team loss, we come home Sunday, week six, one and four Houston Texans, do what we're supposed to do, and we blow the doors off the Houston Texans in a three-phase team win. So it feels good. You're not going to put the Colts in the Super Bowl because you go out and you beat the Houston Texans, but we did not play down the competition. We didn't squeak out a win over the Texans. We dismantled the Texans. And again, that's what you're supposed to do. I know we're 1-4. and four. They're 1-4. and four. We had a tough start to our season. We easily could have won another game or two. Monday night, for sure, we could have won that Raven game, and we should have won that Raven game. But you have to put it in the rearview mirror. You have to move on. Short week, coming home, beating the snot out of the Houston Texans. Doesn't mean you're going to make the playoffs, but it was the next game on the schedule. It was a game you had to win and win convincingly and be able to score 30 points and be able to shut down an offense and keep them out of the end zone, hold them to three points, force three turnovers. That is a building block now as we look at the remainder of the season. Next week, another primetime game, Sunday Night Football on the road against the San Francisco 49ers, you have to start stacking wins if you want to make a comeback and compete for the AFC South title with the Titans, which I still believe we have the talent, we have the roster, and hopefully we get healthy soon. And we're starting to get healthier with T.Y. coming back. I know we had injuries in this game, and we'll see how those play out. But you start to get healthy. You start to get guys back. You get Nelson back. You get Smith back. You can make some noise. This is a talented team. This is a team that entered the season with expectations, knowing you had a tough start to the season. And when you get teams like this, when you get teams that are down, like the Houston Texans, they come in at 1-4. and four. Granted, we were 1-4 and four too, and they have a rookie quarterback. You have to kick them while they're down. The Colts did that in this game. 31-3, Colts over the Texans, improving to 2-4 and four on the season. Yeah, and this is what I wanted to see. I mean, coming off such a heartbreaking loss and disappointment, I thought the Colts really did a good job. I mean, there are some things they need to work on, had some bad penalties, and, and they struggled a bit in the, in the first half. I thought they were a little out of whack as far as balance goes, as far as running the ball and throwing the ball. But overall, when you look at the whole game, I expected this to be a blowout. I did not expect it to be close. Once we put the hammer down with the running game in the second half, I knew that you know the game was over. Uh, I really wanted to see the defense finish, not give up a touchdown late. I know that probably wasn't important to a lot of people that watched. They didn't care. But I wanted to see them finish. You know, We haven't really done that this year. In a game like this, 31-3, it's very easy to just go into a cover two shell, let them go down the field and score, and we didn't do that. So I was happy to see that. I thought Flus caught a really good game, mixed it up, man, played some zone, zone blitzes, brought Kari on the safety blitz, Kenny on the corner. I, I just thought they did a really good job against the rookie quarterback. Everybody, you know, was – I mean, the two announcers were acting like we were playing Joe Montana for the first half. But, <laughs> I mean, you know, I thought the Colts did what they had to do. And, uh, you know, I thought the kicker that came in did a good job making all his, you know, his field goal and extra points and stuff. No, no issues there. So really the only thing that sucked about this game is we got a couple more injuries that I'm sure we'll talk about at some point. But overall, as a, just a just an overall feeling on the game, I was proud of the way the guys came out and uh, took care of business because this is a game you can't lose if you want to have a fighting chance at making the playoffs. And the Colts came out and took care of business. So it was a good win. You know, you can't win two games till you win the first game. So they, they took care of that. Now we got San Francisco next week. But we'll enjoy this one, man. It's it's good to win. Feels good to get back on the winning track after that Baltimore game. And so uh, 
I thought the team, you know, came out, played with the intensity that they had to play with, and they got a got a good win. Yeah, and it feels great to not only win a game, but to blow a team out. And to blow out a divisional opponent, that's not easy to do. I know the Texans are not a good football team. They have a fourth-round pick, rookie quarterback starting. They have a new coach. They have a lot of new players. They're just not a good football team. They're not going to win many games this season. They're going to get blown out a lot. They lost 40 nothing to the Bills, so this isn't their biggest ass-whooping of the year. They lost 40-0 to the Buffalo Bills. But 31-3 is pretty damn good as well. And you want to send a message to a bad team like the Texans and to other bad teams. When we see the Jets on Thursday Night Football, I don't expect it to be a competitive game. Every time I saw those graphics, who's the best 1-4 in four team? NFL on Fox, CBS, NFL on CBS, NFL Network, ESPN. They have the Jets, they have the Giants, they have the Colts, they have the Texans, they have the Dolphins. We didn't belong in that conversation. We were clearly the best one in four team. We were a lot better and we have a lot more talent than our record. And still at two and four, it's still not a good record. We're still sitting at two and four. We're still out of a playoff spot. So we hope those things change in the coming weeks. But it started today beating up on the Houston Texans. And it's not easy, even when teams are bad, like this Texans team is bad, it's not easy to beat up and blow out divisional opponents. So to get a win like this under our belt against the divisional opponent was great. To be able to build on this moving forward, going into Sunday Night Football against San Francisco is great. And then to get it done on both sides of the field, to be able to not only hold the opponent to three points, but to score 31 points in this game. And I look at this defense and they've been rocky this year. For the most part, I think they've been average, but they have forced turnovers. So you get a game like this, you finally hold the team out of the end zone. We don't let them score a touchdown, which is not easy to do in 2021. It's a pass-happy league. It's a wide-open league. It's an offensive-driven league. So it's hard to shut teams out of the end zone. We were able to do that today. We had pressure. Buckner got a sack, which was nice. We got creative, like you were saying, the Kari Blitz, the Kenny Blitz. We had three turnovers. It could have been about five or six. We had three turnovers. There was two that were overturned on instant replay. But we could have had about five or six in this game. Darius all over the field making plays. He now has seven turnovers. He's been a part of seven turnovers, two forced fumbles recovered by the Colts, two interceptions, and three fumble recoveries in just six games. So he's on pace for about 19, 20 turnovers to be a part of 19 or 20 turnovers this year, which is incredible, especially since he's been playing injured and he got off to a sluggish start in other areas of his game. But he's on route now to his fourth consecutive All-Pro season, his fourth year in the league. So Darius is putting together a Hall of Fame career. He gets a lot of hate, a lot of criticism from a lot of outside sources on Twitter. I'll never, ever, 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 ever understand it because the guy is the ultimate playmaker. He's like a boxer. Doesn't matter what he does wrong. He has that killer knockout punch. He had a pick in this game. He forced a fumble in this game. His ability to punch the ball out is second to none. He just has an incredible instinctive ability. And he's just always around the ball. He has a little Bob Sanders in him where he's just always around the action. He's always around the ball. So it was a good complete game. We also had... The interception by Isaiah Rogers, who's playing some good football, coming out of UMass, playing good football on the boundary for the Colts. So I like the depth of the corners, but you have to have at least number four out there or number five out there. You can't go seven, eight, nine, whatever we had out there against Baltimore at the end of that game when literally we were on sixth string, seventh string, eighth string. It's very difficult to play football when you have that many. It's not one guy with your starters. It was like every single backup practice squad guy you could think of in that game against Baltimore. So it was a great bounce back because the defense got embarrassed in the fourth quarter against the Ravens, embarrassed on that one drive in overtime to be able to come back, bounce back, and shut them out in the second half, hold them to three points for the game, and have the same amount of takeaways as points allowed. You're not going to lose many games, if ever, in this league if you could tie takeaways with points allowed in a single game three takeaways three points allowed great job by the Colts defense no question and and you know just to go back to you know what you were saying about you know feeling it feeling good to blow a team out and all that one thing people have to remember about the Colts is they generally kind of play to the level of their competition good and bad I mean you saw it with Jacksonville before you've seen it with Houston last year we don't blow teams out and I think that's been an issue with with Frank, to be honest with you, something that we just have not done or been able to do. 
is put teams away or put them away early. We, we didn't do it early today, We but I thought we did in the third quarter. I thought we really took over the game, and that's what I wanted to see. I didn't only want to win this game, but I wanted to see the Colts come out and just put the hammer down on this team, and I thought they did that. I thought, you know, you mentioned Isaiah Rogers. I really like him a lot. I think he's he might be the fastest guy on the team. I know he's got like four two eight speed. And that can make up for a lot of things. You know, you can make bad reads. And when you got that kind of speed and quickness, you can make plays. And he made an outstanding play on the ball. I think he's only going to get better. I mean, people have to remember it's it's a big jump from UMass to the NFL. Bigger jump than playing in a major conference. So, uh, And he's also a little on the small side. So he's got to put a little bit more weight on. But I really like him. I think he's uh, – I mean, to have a guy like that on our roster, that I mean, he's a really good kick returner. But when he's playing in base defense, you know, he can't he can't return kicks, obviously. And they didn't have him returning kicks today. But, yeah, I think that's a great point you made, pointing out how well he's played. And, yeah, he struggled a little bit in the Baltimore game. But I think he's only going to get better. And hopefully, you know, we can get healthy. It's just, a, it's, it's just a, a war of attrition every week. I mean, we lose Rock again. You know, we just don't know when we're going to get some of these guys back you get ty back and he immediately gets hurt again after having a really really good game today so hopefully these things aren't too serious but it's just like an, it just never ends you know you feel like you get your head above water mm-hmm. and then you go back underwater again but at the end of the day what matters is the team came out prepared they were focused they played intense football uh, they played smart football no big plays you know, Brandon Cooks had 13 catches, but only had like, I think it was 80 some yards, maybe 90 yards. So they didn't give up any big plays to him. You know, they gave up a lot of catches to him, but at the end of the day, yards don't matter points to. That's what we always say on the show. They got three points. Yeah. So, well, the announcer overall, said, man, I, Jason, at one point in the third quarter, the announcer was like, Brandon Cooks doing whatever he wants out here. And I'm like, they have three points on the board and we're in the middle of the third quarter. I think at that point, he's not doing what he wants. He's doing what we're allowing him to do while winning. Like, you could win this little battle, but we're obviously dominating the war. No question. And, and yeah, those announcers were strange. They were – they. I mean, listen, I like Davis Mills as a young quarterback, but they were acting like he was, you know, Joe Montana. <laughs> uh, I thought he did a solid job in the first half. I thought the Colts really got to him in the second half. And uh, yeah, I was, the, the announcers we got. I think we got the the D team or the last Probably. team, whatever that. But yeah, I, I, that was odd. But um, the, I thought the Col- I think I think Flus did that intentionally. If he's going to get his catches, he's going to get five yards a catch. He's not getting thirty yards a catch. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I thought Flus did a good job, kind of scheming this game up. He knew Cooks would be the guy they're going to go to. They went to him. He still didn't. Have, he had thirteen catches and didn't get a hundred yards. Yeah. That's thirteen that's pretty, targets, nine catches. Oh, he had nine catches? Yeah, nine catches for 89. So he was averaging just shy about 10 yards per catch. But you're giving it to him because literally nobody else did anything. Right. And and at the end of the day, it's about not, you know, points. That's all That's all that matters. Like, I don't care if a guy has – I remember there was a game – I'm not trying to go backwards, but I remember there was a game I think in 2008 or 2009 where Brandon Marshall bro- broke the uh, – I think he broke the league record for catches against us, and I'm, I don't think he ever got in the end zone. So, it, it like, as long as people aren't scoring points, I don't care. I don't care about yards. All I care about is turnovers and points. That's all I care about. So, they didn't get a lot of yards, which, you know, is great. But at the end of the day, we, we gave up three points. So, I thought the defense was good. Offense, you know, I thought they, when they got balanced in the second half and started leaning on Taylor, you know, I thought the line did a good job opening holes for him. And, uh, you know, he busted that 184 yarder and it got him going and, and really kind of turned the game right there. And because you're backed up, you're pinned and then you get that huge run and it just changes the game. And uh, I just thought after that, it, they just they were just going downhill against him. So really overall, man, a three facet win. I thought I give Badgley credit. He came in. The guy those announcers were talking about how bad he was in pregame and he comes out, makes all his kicks. That's all you can ask for. Did a good job. So really. Overall, great team win. Last week was a team loss. Even though everybody seems to be blaming one aspect of the team, I thought it was a team loss. This week, team win. And and that's, you know, you want to build confidence in winning games like this, especially divisional games, will give you confidence. Even though, you know, they don't have a great record. They just, they just came off a game where they basically outplayed the Patriots. Mm-hmm. So this is not a, like it's not like you just roll your helmet out there and win 31-3. You got to go out there and earn it. I thought the Colts did that. Definitely. And offensively, I was so happy that we finally put a 30 spot up on the board. It's taken six weeks, 
finally put up 30 points. We asked for it in the game preview. We got our wish. My only problem was Taylor not touching the ball enough in the first half because I don't want to complain about the result. We win the game by 20 points. Happy about that. We scored 31 points. Happy about that. Taylor gets going in the second half. Happy about that. If anything, credit to Frank Reich for fixing it and adjusting at halftime and not just trying to be the smartest man in the room and doing what didn't work in the first half again in the second half. We threw the ball well in the first half. We had the one big touchdown, obviously, to Paris Campbell. Unfortunately, he gets hurt on that play. But besides that one play, and I don't like taking plays away because that play happened it counts outside of that one play we didn't do anything offensively we scored three points the rest of the half we only had a seven point lead the defense held them to three we should have been up by a lot more than seven points they got ball first we had a less possession than them i understand that or two less possessions because i think they got ball last two and we just had a kneel down at the end of the half so i hate going on twitter now during games i used to live tweet and go on twitter a lot now i can't stand it because people are constantly irritating me on twitter and i really shouldn't fall into that trap. I shouldn't read into it, but I do because it's human nature and it's very frustrating. My biggest issue, and again, at the end of the day, happy, satisfied with the offense, like the halftime adjustments. And that was a big issue last year because we didn't adjust at halftime. And this year, the last three weeks, the offense in the second half has been a lot better than the offense in the first half, which is great. So I don't want to complain about that, but the game plan to enter this game and to not get Jonathan Taylor touches and carries in the first half made absolutely no sense to me. And it's okay. We survived it. Learn your lesson for next week and run the ball with Taylor early. Because against good teams, if you abandon the run or you abandon Jonathan Taylor, it probably won't be a seven-point game. You'll probably be down seven if it's a seven-point game. You won't be up seven. And yesterday, we should have been up a minimum of 14 points. Even 10 would have been too low. We should have been up a minimum of 14 points at halftime. And I don't want to run Taylor into the ground. 14 carries for the game is fine. But the 12 should have come in the first half. You blow him out, and then he rests in the second half. It shouldn't be, okay, it's a tight game entering the third quarter. Now let's run our best player. Because without Quentin Nelson out there, the best player on this offense, Wentz has been very good. Pittman's been good. Cox has been good, even though he dropped a couple passes. T.Y.'s back. He had a good game. The best player on this offense outside of Quentin Nelson, who's out, is Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor is a tremendous running back. He's the second best back in the National Football League, in my opinion. At half yesterday, Taylor, two carries. Hines, three carries. Shouldn't happen. Mack, one carry. Pittman had like this end-around carry. And Carson Wentz had one scrambling attempt. So the Colts had eight rushes altogether. Two of them were for Jonathan Taylor. That can't happen. Against good teams, you're not going to get away with that. That can't happen. Taylor finishes his day, 14 carries, 145 yards, two touchdowns. In the second half, 12 carries, 139 yards, two touchdowns, the big 84-yard run. So Taylor was fantastic. It just has to be earlier in the game. And I'm reading tweets at halftime where I'm begging for the Colts to run the ball, which they do do in the second half, and it worked. At halftime, people were saying, the run didn't work, so we abandoned it. What are you talking about? It didn't work. Taylor had two touches. Taylor had two carries and one Reception. He had three touches, two carries. It didn't work. And it's not even like a run pass balance. If you have eight carries for the half, fine. Seven of them, or all eight, should be for Jonathan Taylor. Who on the Titans is stealing carries and touches away from Derrick Henry? When you have a great player, you get that guy the ball. You, If it's a running back, you hand him the ball. They didn't stop the run in the first half we abandoned it especially with Taylor because Hines and Mack shouldn't combine for double the amount of carries that Taylor has in half it just shouldn't happen so that was my biggest issue with this game because we could have blown it open much earlier but credit to the offense credit to Frank Reich for figuring it out at halftime and obviously changing the game plan adjusting and getting Taylor the ball in the second half because he was fantastic yeah, I didn't understand that. I feel I feel like we came out with 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 Hines starting, and then we threw in the random Marlon Mack drive. It just Luke, I'm not trying to, and people are gonna be like Jason's bitching, blah blah blah. But but in the last two games specifically, we should have had more than ten points. We went up and down the field, and I didn't really understand. Taylor is the best offensive player we have out there in my opinion he's the most explosive he's our best player I thought we were going to come out and immediately go to him we do the exact opposite 
And yes, we threw the ball well. We threw the ball down the field. But when you get one dimensional, you score 10 points. You don't score 24. You score 10 when you're one dimensional. And that's what we did. We went, we got one dimensional. You know, we, we had no flow. Like, as far as like the running backs, we had no flow. Like, there was no flow to it. And some people were saying they were stacking the box. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. You still run. You run to set up the pass. You have to run. You have to show that you that you're going to be patient and you're going to run the ball. Otherwise, you're just you're letting the defense dictate to you. They had us backed up in that game, and they stacked the box. And we in the re, one of the reasons they busted off an 84 yard run is because most of those guys were in the box. You know, if, if Pittman gets a block downfield, it's a touchdown. So. I don't buy into this, you know, well, they stack the box garbage because it doesn't matter. You dictate to them. They don't dictate to you. That's the way I feel. So I was disappointed in Frank not using, you know, Taylor Moore in the first half, but he he corrected it. I don't know if somebody got in his ear and said, listen, feed 28. I don't know if that happened or if he just realized, okay, I got to get I got to get back to what we do best and fed 28 in the second half. But that was the difference in the game. I mean, you, you take a game that's kind of close and turn it into a blowout because you're balanced, you're running the ball, you knew he's going to – here's the thing, man. We all know this. Taylor, if you keep giving him the ball, he's going to bust one. It's going to happen. That's – he's just – our offensive line is too good at blocking for runs, and he's too damn good. So I, I just don't like how impatient he can be sometimes. He just gives up on it and takes him out of the game. But he got it right in the second half. Hopefully he learns from this because we really – Luke, when we play good teams, we can't piss away going up and down the field and score 10 points in the first half. That's cost us games. It costs us the Ravens game in my opinion. Yep. Colts just need to focus on doing what they do best and not worry so much about the defense all the time. Yeah, and this that's why – identity is running the ball. Yeah, and that's why it bothered me because last week we saw against a good team what could happen. Today, if you're going up against a good team, if we go into San Francisco and we only run the ball two times in the first half, we probably don't win that game by 28 points. You need to be balanced from the jump and you need to get Taylor involved because he's a freak of nature that could go out and have 139 yards in the second half, but that's a great game. 139 yards and two touchdowns is a great game. He did that in one half. So you have to be feeding him constantly the entire game. Just the thought process, like... Like, I'm looking right now, and I don't want to give any of these morons that much airtime, but even right now, it was the first good rush of the day. It was the first rush over five yards. Nobody was doing anything up until that point of the 80-yard run. Well, you gave him two carries. If he only carries the ball two times, how in the world is he supposed to go off? Oh, it's could you imagine? Ridiculous. Could you imagine? We would never have invented the car, the airplane, the roads, buildings, the phone, the computer. If after two tries, well, that's it. No internet, no phone, no car, no bus, no plane, no train. Like we wouldn't have anything in this world if people just gave up. Oh, two tries, two carries, six yards. Well, it's not working. Let's throw the ball. Everybody think, oh, the the, the pass worked so well in the first half because we scored ten points. I like the passion. I agree with you, man. Whole people are so friggin' stupid sometimes. It it is ridiculous. It's I mean, it's it's. I, I don't have any other words. You run it twice and you quit. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, you but got, then, but Jason, it's not. It's not like we run it twice and we quit. And people are like, oh, well, maybe we, you know, maybe we should run the ball more in the second half. Or I agree with like it's. <laughs> it's the fact that they resort to it wasn't working. It wasn't <laughs> working. What, like, name anything in your life that you have become successful at. Were you successful on the first try or the second try? Most most of the time, no. You have to actually work at it. Especially running the football. Could you imagine on Monday Night I mean, Football, they give Derrick Henry two carries in the first half, and then at halftime you say, why'd Henry only carry the ball twice? Oh, because he was averaging three yards per carry. It wasn't working. Are, are yeah, you then insane? One for 80 yards, and you say, well, that was the first one. Well, well, well you five. know, it didn't work the first two times. I agree with you, man. Sometimes this fan base makes me scratch my head. But, I mean, listen, the Colts won. I'm happy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, wait, Jason, I, also, I don't want to lose this in translation here. I love that Reich corrected it in the second half. For all the crap we've given Frank Reich, and even at halftime, I'm pissed he only gave 
two carries to Jonathan Taylor. Well, let me give him credit for the 12 carries in the second half. That's great because for all the games I've begged for 24 carries, that would be 12 and 12. And he did that in the second half of this game. So I got to give credit where credit is due to Frank Reich. I'll give him even more credit because he made the mistake in the first half. And hopefully he learned from it. He corrected it. And he saw, oh, duh, I have to give him the ball. And I have to give him the ball because all those people that were actually backing me were wrong because I have a self-reflection moment. I know I was wrong and we're going to run the ball. And hopefully this point moving forward, we know our identity and we could be balanced because it wasn't working. Like I don't care how good Wentz looked in the first half. I don't care that we had the big passing touchdown downfield to Campbell. We scored 10 points. And if you took away one play, and I hate to do this hypothetically because that one play did happen outside of the one play, we had three points on the board. So you need to be balanced. And balanced in the second half tripled our score. We had 10 at half. We finished with 31. We tripled our score. We doubled the points we scored in the first half in the second half by being balanced. People were complaining about time of possession at halftime. Are you kidding me? Time of possession? We ran the ball twice with our star running back. Of course you're going to lose time of possession. And it's definitely not the defense's fault. I don't care if they've given up yards. They held them to three points. You're not going to blame the defense for time of possession in a game where you're refusing to pound the rock with your star running back. So I want to give Frank Reich all the credit in the world for changing, adjusting, and getting it right in the second half. Because last year, our second half offense was a lot worse than our first half offense. This year, at least the last three weeks, our second half offense has been much better than our first half offense, which is promising. So if we could start to cash in on these first 15 scripted plays and we could get off to better starts as we've done pretty much throughout the course of Frank Reich's career up until these last couple games where he's been great in the second half, we could start to put real complete games together offensively because our second halves, we're adjusting, we're getting more balanced, we're doing all the things we're supposed to do in the second half, we're getting multiple guys involved. Like I didn't feel like we left this game at halftime, I felt like this, but I didn't feel like we left the game saying, oh, we should have got this guy involved, we should have got that guy involved. We got Cox involved down inside the 30-yard line for the touchdown, we threw a deep bomb to... Paris Campbell when he was still healthy in the game. We got T.Y. involved. We got him involved early, too. We went to him on the first drive, which I love coming off the neck surgery. Get him going early in this game. Pittman with a couple of receptions. And then, of course, the Taylor show in the second half. So that's what you want to see. You want to see balance, and you want to see the playmakers get the ball. Is Ballard perfect? No. He's made multiple mistakes putting this roster together, especially in certain areas of depth. But There are playmakers on this offense. They just weren't being used properly or used enough. But Reich did a much better job in the second half. So I got to give him credit for getting Taylor involved and doing the things we've been begging him to do this season. And at halftime, I was begging him to do it. And he did it in the second half. So that was fantastic. Yeah, and I I just thought, you know, running the ball, when you get the run going, it it just opens everything else up. And I thought, you know, we could have played better offensively. I thought we had some drops today. Mo had a couple of drops, and, and that's why I think Carson's numbers aren't as good as they could have been. I thought Carson was really good today. That throw to T.Y. was unbelievable, uh, that long throw, I think, for about 50 yards. Uh, he rolled out and just – I mean, that was a perp. Dropped it right over the corner and in front of the safety, right into T.Y.'s hands. It was a beautiful pass. I thought he played well. He's done a great job of taking care of the ball. Um, and he got everybody involved. I mean, Mo had a big play. Pitt had some plays. Paris had a big touchdown. Ty did his thing. So he did. He did. You know, Carson did a good job mixing it up, getting it, getting it to different guys. But I'll always believe it's it's much, especially with this football team, specifically specific to this football team. You know, with the with the quarterback that we have, and and he's still not 100 percent, and the players that we have, and the way this team is built, I'm always going to believe balance is the best way to go. And I think you lean on, lean on that running game because that's the strong point of our team. And so I was glad to see that in the second half. I thought it made our, I thought it made the team's job as far as just opening the lead a lot easier, made Carson's job a lot easier. Just running the ball just takes all the pressure off the quarterback. And so I thought it was great in the second half, how we got the ball to Taylor. I feel like that that's what we need to do the entire game. He needs to get 20 carries a game at least. You know, he got 16, I think, in this game, right? Or was it 14? It was 14, 12 in the second half. Yeah, he 
yeah, he needs 20, you know, 10 and a half at least, I feel like, to really get going. And I feel like, you know, going forward, like, you know, the confidence that you build from a game like this to know that, hey, we can put our foot down on a team, you know, and we can ride 28 is something that you use in the future. Because that, that guy, you know, once he gets going, he's hard to stop. And he gets into a rhythm running the ball. And he's, I mean, he's just one of the best in the league. He's a top five guy. And, and I thought he was outstanding today. And I feel like, you know, the Colts, when they get a lead, they can use him. They can run downhill. They can, I mean, they're really pretty solid run blocking team. I thought Reed was good. I thought the offensive line was good today. But overall, man, when, when you when you want to really lean on a team, you give 28 the ball and just watch him run because he's one of the best in the game. Yep, and in my opinion, he's second. Derrick Henry's one, Jonathan Taylor's two. And this was a Henry-like performance because we've seen Henry have bad first halves, great second halves. This wasn't Taylor's fault that he had a bad first half because he only had two attempts. But to have a second half the way he did after not being used properly in the first half was just incredible. So I was... Very happy with the offense, able to put up 21 points in the second half, 31 for the game, our first 30-point mark of the year. Defensively forcing three turnovers, getting off the field when they needed to. People will talk about yards and moving the ball and time of possession in the first half. Ultimately, we kept them out of the end zone. We held them to three points. That's what you're supposed to do against bad teams. So at the end of the day, because we're at one and four, you could look at this like, oh, well, we just had this great blowout win. But. I think we're a one and four team that should be a lot better than one and four. And this was a team we were supposed to do this against. So I'm satisfied. We did what we were supposed to do. We held them to three points. We scored 31 points. We blew the doors off them. And now you move on to San Francisco and you hope that you could start to beat good teams and playoff caliber teams. If you want to really start stacking wins, you can't just win a game, lose two games, win a game, lose three games, win a game, lose a game. You have to eventually stack wins. And we have San Fran next week on the road. I think that's Sunday night. And then we have the big game against the Tennessee Titans. And that's pretty much going to be the season. So it feels great to get this game under our belts, to get a win, to get a big blowout win where you feel good about yourselves, looking forward to the rest of the games. But this is not a game where I'm surprised or we played above our level or our skill level. This is a game where you're playing a team with identical records, but much, much, much less talent. So we went out there, and we honestly did what we're supposed to do. And that's, I think, the theme of this podcast. Doing what you're supposed to do, not playing down to competition, and blowing out bad teams. So I'm satisfied. I'm happy. I love to just see us get the win. And we have Tennessee tomorrow night on Monday Night Football against the Buffalo Bills. And the Bills are playing as good as anybody, if not better than anybody in the best football in the National Football League. So that's going to be a very difficult game for the Titans. If they win that game, it's not going to be a successful weekend because we were supposed to win our game. And if we lost, our season would have been over. So we did what we had to do. But if they win that game tomorrow night, because I've been counting it as a game we make up on them for a couple of weeks now, I'll be pretty upset if they win that game. But we'll see what happens. That's going to be a huge game. If they lose that game, you could pick up a game tomorrow night on the Titans, and that'll only get you, what, a game back or two games? Would that be a game back or two games back? That'd be a game we'd back, be a, right? We'd be, we'd be a game back. Yep. And that would With be the tiebreaker, plus the tiebreaker. Yeah, plus the tiebreaker, but we get them in two weeks. So Yep, to even that, that out. That's huge. So, yeah, I mean, we need them to lose. I mean, we need them to lose tomorrow night. Then they got Kansas City. Kansas City got a win today. Didn't play too great, but hopefully they're going in the right direction and they'll they'll take care of Tennessee next week. Who knows, man? The league is crazy. This division is really a two-team race. We just need to take care of business, Luke. I mean, we did that today. We get Texas again in Houston. We got the Jags twice. Those are three games that shouldn't be close. We got the Jets. That's another win or a game that we should win pretty handily. So, you know, there's not a lot of games on our schedule where you look at and say, okay, we're clearly the better team. But there's those four team or those four games are all games that you look at and you say, okay, we got to have those four. We have to have them. And today was the start of that because we really, I said after the Tennessee game, we can't lose another game in this division. We cannot lose anymore. So, you know, this was the start of getting back into this thing starting today. Had to have it, got it, looked pretty damn good doing it, especially in the second half. Definitely some things we have to clean up as usual, 
but it's nice to do it after a 31 to three win, as opposed to something like last week that none of us want to, you know, think about. So overall, I think a great day for the Colts. The only drawback really is the injuries and hopefully they're not serious. We always worry about that. I think we are going to get some guys back next week. Q being the, you know, at the forefront of that. So, you know, we're going to start getting guys back. Hopefully we can get our head above water with these friggin' injuries and, uh, you know, start playing Colts football for 60 minutes every week and giving teams the best that we got. And I think we saw, you know, the start of that today. And I, I'm excited about the, the next 11 games. Yep. And now you got to stack them. You get one under your belt, two out of the last three. If you want to go back to the Miami game, should be three in a row, but you can't look in the mirror now. You can't think about the Baltimore game. They bounce back nice from Baltimore. You got to look forward to San Francisco and you hope to start stacking W's because we got the big one coming up against the Titans in a couple of weeks. So it feels good. Enjoy this one. And then we got to get another one next week. Yep. Player of the game. Oh, you're right. Player of the game. Yeah, man. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Jonathan Taylor. 12 carries in the second half for 139 yards. Two touchdowns. He was fantastic. He was unbelievable. There's a lot of worthy guys. You could go Leonard with two turnovers. You could go T.Y. You could go Wentz again. There's a lot of guys you could go with in this game. I'm giving the game ball to Jonathan Taylor. He showed up at halftime because we didn't want to use him in the first half. But he was stellar in the second half of this game. If you got him 24 touches, who knows? He could have had a 300-yard game. He was that good today. So, Starts with the guys up front, opening holes for him, but Jonathan Taylor hit him. He was explosive, just fantastic. So I'm giving my, for the culture, game ball, player of the game, to Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, for me, I, I could very easily go with, with the entire defense. I thought, you know, a lot of guys made plays, but when you really look at it, Darius not playing at 100%, very clearly hobbled by that ankle injury, still making plays every week. I think this is four weeks in a row that he's forced a turnover or he's, you know, picked up the ball, you know, or recovered a fumble or something. He does something in every game to help you win. And he did it again today. He had a pick on a nice drop. He got a nice drop on that play. And, and David, you know, the, the quarterback didn't see him, made a bad throw picks it off uh, and then he also you know punches the ball out close to a couple other ones as well so for me I got to give a lot of love to Darius I can, you can tell he's really battling through this injury his ankle is still bothering him I'd say he's probably at 90 85 90 percent he's not 100 percent you can tell because uh, he's not playing as fast as he normally does sideline to sideline but he's making do. He's still making plays, and that's all you can ask. That's all you can ask for. A guy to go out there, give everything he's got every week, and that's what Darius does. And uh, he was outstanding today, and, and as was the defense. You only give up three points. I don't care who you're playing. Your defense did a hell of a job. So uh, kudos to, to Floos coming back and bouncing back this week with a solid game plan. And, and even more than him, the players going out there executing, doing a great job, and, and Darius just coming up huge in a big game for the Colts that they had to have. That's what that guy does. He makes big-time plays, big-time games. That's why he's a big-time player. And uh, just an outstanding job by him today and a huge win for the Colts. Absolutely. I almost forgot the player of the game, Jason. I'm not I'm not used to winning this year because we've been doing so many of these post-game losses where we don't give out player of the game. So good catch on your behalf. That's my man, Jason Spears. I am your host, Luke Diamond, 2-4 and four on the season, and hopefully the second of many wins to come for the Colts the remainder of the season. We're starting to get healthy, I hope. I mean, Campbell goes down, we have injuries. Rock goes down in this game. T.Y. was down at the end. Pascal got lit up. Hopefully it's not as bad as it looks. We get these guys back. We get other guys back. Braden Smith, hopefully the guy was never IR'd. He's missed, I think, like five consecutive games or whatever it might be. And there's a chance Nelson beats him back. So I don't know what the hell's going on there. But we will be back on Thursday for our week seven game preview between the Colts and the 49ers. That is a Sunday night football game. So another primetime game next week in San Francisco. And we'll be back on Thursday for the game preview right here on the For the Culture Podcast.